thing I don't see that often is the subject of shooter development. Because a lot of people will ask, what kind of gun should I get? Because it's almost like implied that they're going to know how to use it. Just having it means that you know how to use it. That's societal. That's a societal issue through like Hollywood and, uh, and all this other stuff. They think that they've received training. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, shooter development. Training is a part of it. But you can't develop as a shooter if that's all you get. So, anyways. I'm going to use the analogy of learning math as a kid in elementary school or, or whatever, just in general. So, but basically, schooling, you know, as a minor in public school, how it works. So, the analogy for training is basically time in the classroom with the teacher to guide you through the different mathematical formulas and break it down, uh, break down, or mathematical equations and use formulas to break it down into simple, solvable solutions. That's basically uh, what training is in, an, in, a, in a school setting. You are actually there and you actually have guidance and people teaching you how to, or someone teaching you how to uh, go about it. You might have teacher's aid or whatever. Uh, maybe she's hot, maybe she's not, who knows. But anyways, same thing applies to firearms training. You might have an instructor who's good looking Maybe it's me. I don't know. But anyways, you're going to learn the different principles, like how to basically pull the trigger without moving the gun, and then you're going to learn how to apply it. You're learning how to do everything, but you have guidance the whole time, and you're learning the application, or you're maybe doing some elementary application of it, and the whole time you have guidance. So you have an initial introduction into what's expected of you for the initial subject, of whatever you're trying to learn. In this case, it would be like Pistol 101 or Pistol Mod 1 or, you know, Beginner Pistol or whatever. So anyways, the next phase is practice. For a school setting, what do you think practice would actually be? Homework. It's on you. You don't get very much class time. And realistically, in the grand scheme of things, we don't get very much class time uh, for firearms, even if you're spending two days doing a course, you're still in the level of training because you have guidance the whole time. Outside of that, it is on you to practice based on the on the equations and uh, based on the formulas for the equations that you are given, you know, or whatever. And for for you learning how to shoot and learning how to basically uh, use that training, you have to practice and develop your own equations to solve. So, that's very important. You have to make time to do it. You cannot develop as a shooter if you skip this. So, the next part, naturally, would be testing. So, you're basically, you've got to develop your own testing. Now, when you're in school, you're given tests, and it's all pretty much based on this right here. So, if you were paying attention in both of these fields, even if you weren't interested in the subject, and you actually took notes and stuff like that, and were actively participating in it, and were cognitively aware, uh, then you probably did pretty pretty okay when it came out to this. So that's how that, that's how the military is actually because if you're paying attention, your outcome's going to be good and everybody's going to think, "Oh, the military is so great at teaching shooting." That's not the case. All this is mandated. It, it, you either comply or you get pain. So how do you think you're going to perform? So, you civilians out there that are paying for courses where there there's no stress and there's no pressure, there, it's a 50-50 of you actually getting the material. You have to be interested and invested in it. But the other part is actually the instructor. Hopefully they're not just taking your money and just parroting off of somebody else's stuff. They actually understand how to communicate with another human being. But anyways, uh, the testing phase, it's on you to develop a test. And that's got to be based on your end goal and your potential application for that, which we'll get into. But the test has to directly reflect what you've learned and how it's going to apply in the next phase, hopefully. So it will be a little bit of a struggle, maybe something a little bit new, but nothing you can't solve. So, same thing applies. You develop your own test, maybe conduct, a, for, for instance, like for shooting out there, they call them drills. They're not drills. Drills are this. Drills are something you do over and over and over again until something becomes autonomic. Reload drills, malfunction drills, uh, drills on the draw. <coughs> presentation drills, stuff like that. Something you do over and over and over again until it becomes autonomic. Those are your fundamental skills. So, anyways, uh, the testing 
would basically be doing like a one to five course of fire. You know, having three targets, uh, shooting one here, two here, three here, four here, five here. Doing something like that to test your ability to follow up, to have recoil control, etc. Coming up with your own testing standards too. And basically grading yourself. You're responsible for all that. In school, you have somebody else doing it for you. And then even afterwards, typically, you you may have some remedial, uh, basically, review of things, where you got things wrong, in order to help you. And even pre-testing uh, help as well. But pretty much in school, even during this, you're not typically alone. And typically, you can have notes and stuff like that. But anyways, it's somewhat parallel. But you're basically responsible for all of this. And then this part right here is application. Application is not something that you necessarily... It is something you do, but I want to go ahead and explain application in the way of a pyramid, and it would basically follow the same, you know, principle of a house. You know, a house has, you know, foundations, and I call them foundational skills instead of fundamental skills, uh, but, yeah, so, anyways, <clears throat> so, you have your foundational skills. That's your adding, subtracting, multiplication, division. And uh, that wasn't on purpose, that four on the bottom. But anyways, you have your foundational skills. Hopefully your kid has been going through school long enough and been paying attention in math enough and been practicing enough and had enough homework or whatever to where they can look at the plus sign and know exactly what that means. They can look at an equation and they can look at an equation like this barring my handwriting, they can look at an equation like this and automatically know what to do. Because they've learned all of these core fundamentals and they've learned the signs and symbols of what they mean. They understand what those formulas mean. For some people, probably because of my handwriting, it looks like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Or Egyptian hieroglyphics. English is like that for me. But anyways... They should know simply how to solve this. It's like, okay, so I do addition, I add this up first, and then I multiply here. So then 7 times 10. I wonder where what we're going to do here. Okay, so anyways, the point is, is that they're foundational skills and they should be something that you can do very quickly and that you already have the formulas and everything that you can apply it. It's applied, it's applying those skills, and it's very easy to do so. So it should just click in your head. Same thing with these baseline skills. Reloading, malfunction correction, all you need to do is see the sign, and you should be able to start solving it without needing to use your fingers, use a calculator. And my analogy for that is looking at the gun while you're reloading, while you're conducting a malfunction clearance. And here's the other analogy looking at your feet while you're walking just to make sure that you don't stumble because the excuse is well you're just making sure that it goes right into the mag wheel what how do you not know that it's going to go into the mag wheel based on indexing why even bother indexing the magazine why don't you just grab it like this and just you know just throw it in the general direction at least then you would justify looking at it so anyways if you don't have good foundational skills you're not going to be able to develop the rest of it and a lot of people will say, well, in competition, it doesn't really matter. It always matters because you're able to keep your cognition uh, up here instead of distracting yourself down here because you do put cognitive function into performing that. You should have it on an autonomic level. Reloading is one of them. Malfunctions is another one. The rest of it is your awareness and planning and your basically your strategy or tactics to approach a certain situation and solve problems. That's, that's why your reloading malfunction clearances should be on an autonomic level to where you don't need your eyes on them unless there is an issue. Just like here, if I was to basically, instead of three plus seven here, what if I put an X? Then, you would notice the formula. You would understand, okay, this is going to be, basically, I need to add these up, but I got an X here. Okay, that's where you stumble and you're starting to look, okay, what's going on? And then you do remedial action on the issue. So the same thing applies. I hope you like these analogies. I think they're pretty good. But anyways, you basically got to solve for X. So then you got to change the gears. 
into a remedial action or you're basically like, well, that just doesn't make any sense. You can't solve for X. So unless you have like an equal sign or whatever. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you have good foundational skills that help you solve things based on your ability to identify the issue. You got to identify the malfunction and then you can just run through it while your situational awareness is on the issue at hand. If that's in competition, you're plotting out your movement to the next target. And yeah, so that would be my analogy for the application process of certain skill development. And this can mean multiple skills. I mean, you could have five different things you're learning during a training class for basic pistol, or maybe you're doing a, a tactical carbine course and you're learning like 10 different things that uh, all interlink. You gotta practice all of them and you probably have to segregate it, but then you gotta test yourself on all of it. And then you gotta basically apply it somewhere in this tactical pyramid. And I think in, in one of these blocks, I think up here, I think around here you can start wearing multicam. I don't know. But anyways, I hope you guys have appreciated the analogies I was trying to give in the uh, video in general. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. And you guys have a good one.